say that. Good job, guys. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You don't really need to sit down because we're going to do something very special today. If you can come in, uh, we're going to do a quick fire drill. Can I just hear a round of applause? Yay! Yay! So if we can have a look, we've got a quick quiz before you get too comfortable. So um, every six months we want to do a fire drill, or at least once a year, just so we know where all the exits are, we know what to do in case of emergency. Um, we just, uh, did you know where the exits are in this building? Can you point to them? Well, very good. Okay, let's talk about this one. Where does it go? Have you ever been out this exit? Yeah. yeah. Where does it go? Out the side. Out the side. To the bus stop. To the bus stop. Where's the other exit? Out the kitchen. Out the kitchen. Where does that one go? Out the backyard. Through the gate. Backyard through the gate. Um, maybe we don't even have to do it, Paul. You guys are all so clever. There's one more exit, isn't there? Front. The front. The front. That's an easy one. And where do we meet? At the bus stop. Oh, hang on, stop, stop, stop. So number one, where's our first aid kit? Does anyone know? No, the kitchen. The kitchen. kitchen, yeah. Just sort of around that side, isn't it? Just sort of straight over there. And who are our first aid officers? You, you'd be one. I'm not actually. I've got to go and do my first aid. I used to be, but not anymore. So who's our first aid officers? Yeah, I'm not an officer, but I have done it. Yeah, and, and Fiona? I'm a first aider. And Karen. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And so, maybe. Where's the defibrillator? Where's the defibrillator? We don't have one. We've got a car battery in the. In the... <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is our. The Lord is our jump. I'm jump and leave in the boot. The jump and leave in the boot. So, just quickly, so can we do that again? Karen, can you stand up so everyone can see Karen? This is Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First aid of Marie. Can you have a look at Marie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at Fiona. That's what she looks like over there. Okay, there you go, two people. All right, who's our safe church officer? You are. You are. Yeah, I'm responsible for doing things like this, writing reports when things go wrong, checking things, make sure that we're all um, being kind to each other and not, not abusive, etc., etc. You actually write reports. Yeah. That board. So we'll, we'll write things up and have it at our board meeting, discuss things, and put it in the file, and just monitor situations so they don't get out of control. It's true, Tony. <laughs> okay, number four. How many fire extinguishers do we have? And where are they? There's one over there. See that one? Two. Okay. One. Steve, do you know where the next one is? There's one here. Where's the next one? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yeah, you all helped him. In the kitchen. There's one. And there's one more hidden. Can we be more specific? In the little cupboard near the storeroom, where it says fire extinguisher, there's a little sign that says it. Yeah. Who's ever used a fire extinguisher? You have. What do you do, Shane? Do you want to just tell us? What do you do? Set the fire extinguisher. 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 And you, you squirt it whereabouts? On the fire. On the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You've got to pull out the pin and squish the handle down. The handle down. And it hold it pretty, pretty heavy. And you sort of, I think you spray it at the base of the fire. That's what I was trying to get. No. But you're right, it's fire will do. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you spray it at the assistant pastor. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Have we got any more questions? I've got a question. Yes. What's the sunflower store place? Oh, yeah, true. Um, they're mystery sunflowers. Oh, they're not ours? Yeah, they'd be the Korean Ebenezer Baptist Church, who also used this building. They don't do things by halves. So they won't mind if we, one goes missing? Yeah, they probably will. That's not love. Yes, it is love, because it's love I'm going to share, but love with someone else. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you might come up in the theft category, no, though. <laughs> Not steal? I'm not stealing, I'm borrowing. <laughs> 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 Robert, can you turn it down a little bit? Can you turn it down and turn it Is that it? Any more questions? <laughs> 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 oh, 
Uh, it's a good question. Are they for electrical or paper or just one? No, look, they're multi-use. Um, this one is for, you can see it here, paper, wood, textiles, oil, liquid and electrical. So, so that's all one, that's what everything. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, yeah. Some people don't know that. Mm. That's oh, true. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Very helpful, Gordon. Oh, yeah. okay. So, can we go back to the beginning? So, let's let's all be um, more Christian y and church y. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. We don't have to go outside, do we? They're pretty good. You know where the exits are. <laughs> do you notice know that there's something yeah. else up about the sting? A fire blanket. Very good. Fire blanket. Okay. What do you do? Who's ever used a fire blanket? You have. Yes. Tell us about it. What do you do with the fire blanket? Well, you've got to be the fire on the stove and you have to pull it out of its container and put it over the fire. Because if you just blow it, the oil might be everywhere. No, you just water it. Keeps you warm. Oh, my green! So I didn't even know that. So you get the fire blanket out of the packet, you spread it like that, and you cook it over the fire, and it just goes out. And to open it, it actually opens at the bottom, and you pull the blanket out from the bottom. And you can't reuse it. You have to go and buy another one. So you say it just hangs it on the wall. You just yank it out. Like a hotel or whatever. Yep. This is great. I'm learning All right, okay, okay. We just give everyone a great big clap for being so very, very good. And now we can settle down. And now we settle down. Let's get holy. Get holy. Get Right. You, yeah, there you go. I hope we can still. Okay. So, um, can I just ask you who's um, grateful for something? Yeah. Yeah. For being here. I'm asking a few people just to yell, yell out something you're grateful for. Being here this morning. Being here. For God's honesty, please. For God's honesty? Yeah. Grateful that our fire pillar is in All right, I'm going to actually pray because we're going to have to be more calm down, everyone. All right? So, Father, thank you that we can meet uh, in your special uh, place, this church, Lord, this temple. And we praise you, Lord, that we can be a body and ask you a miracle of um, love and the Holy Spirit to be here. And I thank you that we can operate, Lord, as, a, as a, your bride. And Lord, I thank you that although we're not worthy, you um, accept us as your children and fill us with your spirit, even though we're sinners and <coughs> we just sin all the time. We thank you that nevertheless you hold us closely and give us a robe of righteousness and a ring on our finger and call us your sons and daughters and your, um, yeah, your prize. The apple of your eye. Thank you, Lord. We're grateful for that. Anything else you're grateful for from, from God? Uh, you, you just yell it out, please. Freedom. Freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and sickness. You're grateful for sickness? Yes. Why is that? Because I thought some of the people get sick. And sickness can make you um, character, can't it? Yeah. Perseverance. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, deals with your pride. Anything else you're grateful for? So why don't um, we just go into an attitude of prayer and just say a couple of these things. Just really quick, so Lord, I'm just grateful for the sky that's so beautiful in this area. Um, thank you for the ocean. Can I ask you just to go for it? Just let's do this prayer. And if you can say it, yeah, even if we say it at the same time, can we try that? Yeah, quite a little just grateful for
just might ask um, just a couple of people on our behalf, if you'd like to feel led or like to serve him by praying, just to we love, love to hear you pray just uh, on our behalf and just to give thanks to God for some of those things in a big voice. Lord, we thank you that you are an amazing, awesome God. We thank you that you bless us with blessings every day. We thank you for so many promises in your word, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience, your goodness, your kindness towards us, Lord. We thank you for so many things, Lord. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the people doing good in our, in our world, Lord. And we just have so much to thank you for. So we just... We just love you, Lord, and thank you for all your blessings. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your chastisement, Lord. We don't always enjoy it, and sometimes we fight against it. But, Lord, we're just so grateful you don't leave us in our sin and in our misery. And, um, and, and for the people that help us through it too, Father, we thank you that you send people to, that we can talk to. And we especially thank you for your Holy Spirit, that um, is a constant teacher and a companion, the paraclete, <coughs> who is always with us, that leads us into all truth. Lord, we're just so grateful that we're not orphans. We have a good Father. Amen. So we're going to sing a song that requires um, the, the, the happy people in the building can sing and dance a little bit. So if you're wanting to um, wave your flag, did you bring your flag, Tony? You can give it a... It's uh, body life. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll just pray anyway for them. Lord, we just thank you for Paul and Karen and ask for your blessing as they travel for travelling mercies, for joy and laughter and for those moments where you go... Oh, wow, isn't that beautiful together? Lord, bless them with joy and refreshment, please. And we just pray that we'd be okay here without them too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Lord. All right, so I'm heading over to Paul Hills. Can you give him a rousing applause? Stand up, that's fine. Thank you, Paul. 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 Sarah, where did you get it from, Karen? Sure, I, I was looking on my laptop and it just popped up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We know your laptop, Carol. So I had to try before. Did you like the hair? Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah, oh, gee. the 70s, eh? Aren't they incredible? Yeah, that, that was 77. 77, so 45 years later. Yeah. Wow. Those were the good. days, my friend. I thought they'd never end. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, it was a great day. I hope you enjoyed their wedding day. I hope you did. <laughs> I thought it was a great day. That was really fantastic. So, praise God, hey? mm. And you know, you know, just a little quick story that an um, uh, elder at the Church of Christ in Ballarat um, used to talk to me when I used to, I was sort of only just, to, just sort of hanging in there with God, but I used to go to the Church of Christ and um, the minister was Frank Hunting and uh, he was a hellfire brimstone preacher. Like, I loved him, I thought he was fantastic. He used to convict me every time I went. <laughs> and uh, and the, you know, the elder said to me, come along to this church camp. And I thought, yeah, God, I've got to get myself really right with you. I'm, I'm, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this camp and get right with you, God. And um, as soon as I saw Karen, I was totally distracted. <laughs> that was it. That was it. You know, you know what's funny? This other guy came and sat next to her. And I thought, no way, mate. It's really funny. It just rose up at me. I said, no. You got the victory. That's the embarrassing story. That's an embarrassing story. Yeah, yeah, that's right.
that's yeah, it's good. Yeah. I went back years later and thanked that uh, elder, didn't I? Went back and had a coffee with him and thanked him for uh, being such a blessing. Because, you know, well, I was only, oh, yeah, only young, 19, 20. And you need older people. You need people around who will just give you that little bit of guidance and hang with you and listen to you. And this guy did that. And actually, it was funny because the time we went and had coffee and thanked him, um, he was going through a struggle himself. You know, he was going through a battle. Oh, have I done anything for you, God? What have I done? You know, he was in one of those seasons. And uh, so it was a joy. It was a joy. Go and thank him. It was really good. Cool. Bless him. Bless God. Okay, let's, uh, let's get to the Word of God and uh, see what the Lord's going to show us. First of all, let's just pray. Eh? Thank you, God. Thank you. Mm. Oh, Lord, you know I love that song, Holy God, Holy God. We sung today, Lord. And I, I just thank you that you are a holy God. Lord, in the, in the midst of our weaknesses and failings, Lord, your grace and your mercy comes to bless us because you are so holy. We thank you. Bless you this morning. We pray, Lord, that your word might come with great power and weight into our hearts this morning. And that all the words that are not of, not of you, Lord, would fall away, but that your words, Lord God, might penetrate deep into our hearts. We ask today. Thank you, Holy God. Thank you for your word. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just wait for a second and just see. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, that was so good. That was so wonderful. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what sort of a week you've had, but just now can, can be just a little precious moment where you just, as we've already said this morning, receive from the Lord this morning. So if you just need the Holy Spirit to touch you this morning, minister to you, just just for a moment, we're just going to wait and receive from the Lord. You might want to show the Lord in a physical way by opening your hands or something like that. Just, just going to follow the Holy Spirit who's, who's said to me so much this year, make time for me. Make time for me. And that rain is going to fall. That rain of the Holy Spirit is going to fall when we make time for God. This morning, wherever you need the, the Lord's touch this morning, just let Him fall upon you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good, God. We thank you. Just receive your touch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. you expect that the Lord's going to move with you.
Um, you know, I've been hearing from the Lord this week of, of how I believe the Spirit wants to just bring up <coughs> the gifts in people's lives. You know, the gifts of the Spirit. And I don't know if the Lord's been speaking to you, but just receive from Him this morning. And I believe the gift of prophecy is going to rise up. You know, be raised up in people's hearts. That's you. If you're hungry for that gift of prophecy, or bless the church, then just receive from the Lord. Because I just, I just know the Spirit's moving there to equip the church. Lord, would you equip us even more today, Lord God? Lord, where gifts have been dormant in our hearts, Lord, will you just open the floodgates and begin to come in? Bring to the fullness those things that you want us to move in. Bless us in here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise you. You're hungry for God this morning. And He's going to come and fill you up. This is what He's wanting for the church. Lord, fill us up this morning so that we, we don't stay religious and we don't stay as we are, Lord. Come and fill us up this morning, we pray. We don't want to just go through the religious motions, Lord. We're hungry for God. Hungry for Him. Thank you, God. Thank you. Um, we just receive your Spirit this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you. Just for another minute or so. Drink in the Spirit of God now. Breathe it in. You know, sometimes I just breathe deeply and believe the Spirit is filling. <coughs> breathe in. The Spirit of God. Thank you. Stir up those gifts in the hearts of people. Quit your church. Quit your church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. pray a blessing of your love as we mentioned this morning I just pray that blessing of your love over every person here I just know there's some people whose hearts have been really hurting and I, I just pray Lord that your love would flood in your joy and your love would flood into hearts this morning Lord God come and do a mighty work we ask Lord in the hearts of every person here and I want you to just receive that love this morning. Receive it from God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, it's, uh, we're really coming into a, a mighty place in the Spirit of God. We really are. And as things are beginning to turn around, I know, I know it, I've just experienced it during this week especially. The Lord's speaking to me about things turning around. Be, you know, we said last time that be, we're coming into the timing of God. And, and we are. You know, watch, watch out. I, said, I used the word watch out. I thought that it might have sounded a bit odd. But in a good way, watch out. Watch for how the Spirit of God is moving in your lives and in, the, in people around about you in situations. Because we're starting to see breakthrough and turnaround that's happening now. You know? I just couldn't get over it last week how 
It was like everything I did almost t turned to gold. <laughs> All these different things happened and I thought, that's you God, that's not me. That's you, God, just making it all happen. And, and it's turning around. And I'm beginning to see other prophetic people talking about this breakthrough and this turning around in, in what God is doing now. And it's so exciting that God is bringing it about. So what, watch out. Be expectant for what God is doing in your life and through you. Okay? Because it's, it's a wonderful thing that God is doing. Really is. And it's for those who are hungry for God. We can we can choose, and then this will be the challenge to the church in the days ahead. You can stay as you are and be content and be satisfied. You know? A little bit of God, a little bit of church. We can we can stay satisfied if we want to. If, if we want to. But all we need is, is the willingness to follow God. Remember the last few weeks ago, we talked about worship, didn't we? We talked about the mixture in the church, you know, and the mixture of religion and, and, and self and the world. They were the, the three main things we talked about, the, the mixture in the church. But God's, God's moving in to get the mixture out of our hearts, isn't he? And to make us fully, fully seeking God with all of our hearts. I think I mentioned uh, Youth for Christ have got a new sort of a, a theme or a heading and it says deny yourself and follow God radically. Mm. I thought, yeah, I love that. Deny yourself and follow God radically. Mm. And that's the only way we're going to walk it through in these days ahead. Um, we don't, we're, we're having a, a nice little lull now where it's just sort of coming back around to sort of like normal, aren't we? except for poor people who've lost their jobs because of the mandates. But um, we're sort of coming around to serve something similar to normal. But, you know, don't be fooled now because we, we can't let our guard down. This is the time to press in to a deeper place with God. Otherwise, when all the rest of it hits, which it will hit in the next while, when all the rest of it hits, because we're in the beginning of sorrows, that last day is the beginning of sorrows, Matthew 24. We're only going to walk through that well if we're close to God. We're hungry for God. That's what's going to happen. So we talked. We talked about that last time. We talked about um, surrender. You know, don't think that we can go forward in God without surrender. Without surrender, because our verse this year. What is it? Isaiah sixty. Arise, arise. Have you been thinking about Brian? Right. What's the word? Rising up. Rising up in God. Have you been thinking about that? Do we even want to, to go to a higher place in God? This is the challenge that the Spirit of God is bringing to the church. The world so gets into our heads, doesn't it? And it can have this dulling effect on us if we're not walking day by day. Denying ourselves and following God with all of our hearts. Mm. This Youth for Christ heading that I saw in their pamphlet, you know, it's they're saying to the young people, we need another Jesus movement. Come on, kids. Come on, young people. You know, they're, they're really being moved by God to stir up the young people. Mm. And I love it. Deny yourself and follow God radically. Mm. But it's not just to the young people. It's to us. We're so needed. We need to be standing and walking with those young people, don't we? Yeah. We need to be loving them. Yeah. You know? This week I got, um, I was talking to my daughter who's a fairly new Christian. Yeah. And she said to the church and I said to her, um, God kept saying over and over again that the young people need to get beside the older people because yeah. the older women would train the younger women. Yeah. And the, that's our role, like as we get older and more mature in Christ, yeah. is to actually get aside the younger people to mentor them. That's right, absolutely. We so do. Yeah, um, what's her name? The heads up is for Christ now. Magavia, Cindy Magavia, I think. She heads it up. She said she's sitting down with young people just reading the Bible with them. Yeah. And she's sharing that Bible reading app with them. 
know, they're, they're ready to get them. And she said, they're just hungry as we continue to get with them. You know, mentor them like that. They're hungry for God. So it's an exciting time that we're in. <laughs> it really is. But the, the challenge is there to us. To not let our guard down now. And to continue to seek God with all of our hearts. Because this is a different church that's going forward into these, these last days. It's a different church. You know, we're, we're on the verge of God raising us up to a place, I believe, of real power and authority in God. You know? To really move forward and display to the world how real God is, how powerful God is, and how He can change people's lives. And shouldn't we want that when you think of all of the young people and, and, and other people around about us who are suffering with mental health and all sorts of other issues, sickness and everything. The church is called to minister to them. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk forward in new faith. This is the turnaround. Mm -hmm. The church is turning around to be what God wants it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's us being part of it. So we looked at unity. We looked at um, that's part of the thing. But, um, you know, we, we looked at the scripture. And I want to finish off and follow through on the scripture from John 4, 24, that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. Fantastic verse of scripture. And it's, it's worth just spending another week pondering on it, isn't it? God, God is spirit and those who worship him, we looked at that whole thing of worship and we we sort of trimmed it all down to this, this one liner, and there's a lot behind it all, but this one liner was worship is living to please God. Yeah. Worship's not a few songs on a Sunday. You know? It's not saying you go to church, it's not any of those things. Worship is living to please God. Yeah. It's giving our lives over to God to, to live for Him. And this is, this is the whole thing that's going to permeate the church shortly. You know it now. The challenge of the Spirit will be. You can, you can go through a liturgy of religion on a Sunday or you can come to church but live for God the whole week. Radically follow God. This is the message of the Spirit coming out. It's such a challenge, isn't it? Because we like comfort and we like it easy. And it's not to say that that's going to be terrible, but it's going to be exciting. What God gets us to do. How He uses us. Living to please God. That was what we said. And we said that, that that's, that's a sacrificial lifestyle. It's sacrificial. You know? There's no real worship without sacrifice. Someone said. I don't know who it was. But there's no real worship without sacrifice. Sacrifice is such a powerful thing. So, that was last time. And we, we looked at that whole thing of worship. And we asked the question, how do we arise? You know, Isaiah 60. How do we rise, get to a higher place in God? It's, a, it's worth asking, isn't it? How do we get there? Okay. Um, and this verse in John 4.24 is one of the keys, I believe, to worship God in spirit, and in truth. And we finished off talking about the Spirit and, and how we, we cannot worship God in our flesh. We can't worship God out of our own ideas. Religion is worshipping God out of our own mind. Religion is worshipping God out of our own mind, our own ways that suit us, that make us feel comfortable, even make us feel like we've earned something from God. Because we've done well. Religion is all about looking good and doing well and earning things. And that's not it, is it? We're saved by faith. So how do we arise? Well, I just want to say one more thing to finish off from last time. If you worship God in spirit, if you haven't been baptised in the Holy Spirit, if you haven't received the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you won't be able to worship God as, as you should. You just won't. And that's the key. 
you know, the difference between being without the fullness of the Spirit to having the fullness of the Spirit is just huge. It doesn't turn us into someone who's perfect, but it enables us to, to be, to walk in power and to be His witnesses. And the, and the church now needs another radical move of the Holy Spirit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. To come in and fill us mm -hmm. with the fire of God. The difference in my life at 28 years old when I got baptized in the Spirit and I was a mess um, was just incredible. The difference was incredible. It was absolutely awesome. It really was. And yet when I got prayed for, I didn't feel a thing. Didn't feel a thing. I walked out of there and didn't feel a thing. But over the next few days, as I've said in the past, the Spirit of God welled up in me. And all the things that were overpowering me dropped away. You cannot worship God, live to please God, if you're not baptised in the Holy Spirit. And I would encourage everybody who's here, if there's anybody who hasn't and doesn't feel that they are baptised in the Spirit, come and ask for prayer. Come and ask for prayer. You just need a willing heart to live for God. You just need Him to want Him to come in and, and empower you to live completely for Him. And that was the place that I got to back when I was 28 years old. I was desperate. Can you please just uh, explain to people um, the difference between baptising water and in the spirit? Because we yeah. that, that yeah. term is um, you know moved yeah. around, but well, to get an understanding for people that may not know. Yeah, well, the, yeah, good. Yeah, the key word is baptised, which in the Bible is to be immersed. Mm -hmm. to be immersed and, and so when we're baptised in water we're identifying with the death of Jesus in a physical manner aren't we? and, and in a way in a, in a, we're demonstrating to those who see that we are willing to die with him and be raised up into a new creation, into a new person to new life and so we're physically demonstrating our belief in that what Christ has done. But the key word is immersed, the baptism or the fullness of the Spirit into our lives if we go to that side of it. And it's, a, and that's, it's almost mystical in one way. You know, the, the Bible talks about it, gives examples of it, stories of it. The Apostle Paul goes and meets people, uh, was it in Antioch, I think it was? No, it was Ephesus, sorry. In Ephesus, doesn't he? And he sees people who, who had confessed Jesus, but they'd never been baptised in the Spirit. And he asks them, what baptism have you had? And they, and they said, water baptism from John. And then he prays that they're baptised in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And, you know, the Bible demonstrates how necessary it is for us to walk in the fullness of the Spirit of God. It really is. <coughs> But don't ask unless you're willing to, to really give your life over to God. So a lot of people who have sometimes been disappointed and when they've asked to be prayed for, but their hearts weren't right. Their hearts were still to live for themselves. <coughs> See, the whole thing is that, that this is a surrender. This is a giving your heart over to God. Now, God doesn't come in and fill someone who's full of themselves. That's the simplest way to put it. <coughs> we're full of ourselves, we're not going to have God. You know, when I was 28, it was a surrender of my will. Because I, I sat there in my sister's church, and some of you would have heard me say, crying. I was so embarrassed. I was just so embarrassed. I was crying. But it was, it was the repentance of God coming on my heart. It was repentance. And, and for a moment I said, God, no, 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 this is too hard. Because I was so embarrassed. I couldn't actually stop crying. I wanted to. And at that point I was so hardened in my heart from the things of God. But God somehow got in there. And He broke my heart. And the thing was that, that I had to come to this point where I had to surrender. And as I said, for a moment I said, no, God. And God's presence left me. And 
it sounds like nothing to you, but when I felt God's presence leave me, I, I almost ran out the door. I was so scared. Because <laughs> I suddenly realized I'd lost something that I didn't know was there. That was God, His presence. And immediately when I felt that, I, I went in my mind. I said, oh God, no, no, no way. I'm going to do it your way, God. Those were my words. I'm going to do it your way, God. I surrender. And from that moment on, that was the change. That brought about the change. So, please come and ask for the baptism of the Spirit if you don't feel you've received it. But come knowing that God doesn't play games. You know? God wants all of you. He wants all of our hearts. He wants all of our, our commitment. And this is going to take us to a higher place when the church sees this. You know? We don't need the world. We want to bless the world. We want to be the conduits to bless the world, but God's trying to get the world out of the church right now. The mixture of the world and the church has got to come out. The, mi the mixture of, you know, grand, wonderful church services where one person has highlighted so much. The, those things are starting going to be taken down, you know, to the humility of God's family together, loving each other. We're being raised up to a new place of loving each other. It's what I love about here. There's a lovely family sense here in this, in this church. So, we worship God in spirit and in truth. Worshiping in truth. Really interesting to think. I started to think about this this week. Worshiping in, in truth. And um, I saw someone mention the novel. Uh, that George Orwell wrote in 1949, I think it was. 1984. I don't want to confuse you with dates, but it was written in 1949. But the book was 1984, George Orwell's, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, it, was, it was like a secular prophecy of what was going to happen. And um, I was thinking of this whole thing of truth. And I thought, wow, oh, there's a chapter in his book called The Ministry of Truth. Wow, that's interesting. So I looked it up and had a bit of a check on it. And the guy in that particular chapter is one of the key characters called Winston. And he gets sent to the Ministry of Truth. And the work of the Ministry of Truth is to try and change truth. So he was sent there to alter history, right? to alter um, records. <coughs> Excuse me alter records, to make people think that what they've known about in the past wasn't really correct. You know, there in the Ministry of Truth. And he was sent there to do that. So that what was happening now, remember the book is about living in a totalitarian, I knew I wouldn't get that right. Totalitarian are practicing so much to <laughs> Doesn't matter. But you know what? We know what you mean. A dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> to live in a totalitarianism <laughs> a regime. <laughs> because what that regime was doing had to look better than what happened in the past. So they alter truth. What's happening now? Yes, they are. Statues, statues are being pulled down. Our history is taken out of school books. Yeah. Australian yeah. school books have hardly got anything of Australian history in them now. You don't know the Judeo-Christian um, foundation that we had in this in this nation that's been taken out. Yes. You know? They're changing history. They're changing truth. This was this was the job of Winston in the Ministry of Truth, written in 1949. This is what is happening right now. Truth. And you have to stop and it's not easy to think that, especially in the last couple of years, we could, we could say longer, but in the last couple of years, the absence of truth is just, oh, it's plummeted, hasn't it? <laughs> truth is just gone out the window. And in the, in the face of reality, mm -hmm. you know, in the face of reality, 
I think the New South Wales government said the other day that uh, only 900 people got uh, lost their jobs because of the mandates. <laughs> it's more like 9,000, someone told me. Yeah. Um, and it's being proved and tabled in Parliament, you know. So truth is just not even cared about now. Just blatant lies. But that's not where we're heading. It's just an example. We're looking at our own hearts, aren't we? Because we've been called to worship God in spirit and in truth. And what is that? And what is that saying to us? What is that saying to us? Well, you know, some people even say that truth is what you make it. Uh, I, I've talked to a Christian person who was a, a school teacher, I think, and, and I, I was shocked to hear them say years ago, well, truth is just what, it's right for me. Truth is what's right for me. And I thought, whoa, yeah, really? Okay. <laughs> so what is, what is, what is truth? We, we, need to, um, we need to ask that question. What is truth? It's certainly not subjective, is it? No. A lot of people don't believe in absolute truth. But there is absolute truth, isn't there? Yes. There is no doubt. And yet, in this world, we know people are denying it. Mm -hmm. Denying their gender. Denying factual things. Yes. But there is absolute truth. How do we recognise truth? Well, think of it now from a Christian perspective. And I sat and asked God about this and I thought, I thought I heard, and I know I heard God say to me that truth is everything that God has said and done. Mm -hmm. That's truth. Yes. Everything God has said and done. That's truth. Mm -hmm. That's truth. And it's in Scripture. How do we, how do we, there's other ways. Everything God has said and done, so get your thinking caps on. Where are the places in this world where you see truth, the things that God has said and done? Where are they? In the flower. So creation. creation. Flowers. 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 Trees. Yeah. So I would take that as creation. Yeah. yeah God created everything. That's yeah. Genesis. God created everything. That's right. In place. That's right. Yeah. And isn't that true? In the church. In the church? Yeah. <coughs> well, we, we hope so most of the time. Yeah, in the church. Yeah, we do. In God, God's Word is an obvious one, isn't it? Yes. God's word is totally truth, and yep. you know we, we don't need to state in case someone looks at the recording that we believe that the scriptures is the absolute truth of God, absolute. all of it, and um, we that's us. Some new Bibles aren't very accurate. No, 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 no. that's right. Israel out. I didn't want to use the word Israel. Sorry. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah, some yeah, one, yeah, one, yeah. Of, one yeah. of the new Bibles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's another way we see God's truth is the story of Israel. The story. The story of Israel, isn't it? That's another one. Yeah. Okay. What? Uh, what else? There's probably one other we could say where we we receive truth. Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's all truth. That's historical truth. That's right. The, sorry, Lux. Stars and virgin. Yeah, yeah, creation. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so true. It's pretty awesome. Can't believe it come from a big bang, can we? <laughs> that's for sure. No. One, other, there's another way that the Bible demonstrates to us, and that's you know, it's the Holy Spirit, but it's the Rhema word of the Spirit, yeah. when the Spirit of God speaks into our hearts. Yeah. Now you know we know that some people can take that sort of too far over there and it's sometimes their imagination and not God. But it, if you've really tuned into God, we do receive that word from the Spirit of God, don't we? Mm -hmm. And it is scriptural. It is very scriptural. Some people wouldn't agree with that. But I thought of that the other day and I thought, what about the story of Peter? Remember Peter? When he's up on the roof and he must have been smelling the guys cooking dinner. It says that they were cooking a meal. He must have been smelling it. God must have thought, I guess, this is the opportune time to give him this vision, you know, because um, he's hungry. So God, what's he do? He lowers down the sheep with all the animals on. And he, and he says, so don't call, what's he saying? Don't call things unclean. Did I have God has created. Yeah. Three times that happens, doesn't it? And 
right then he begins to understand that God was speaking to him about something. And what happens? The guys turn up from the Roman centurion, don't they? At his door. And he starts to, to get the royal word of God that these guys, which he shouldn't even associate with, he's a Jew, shouldn't let him in their ha into his house. But he puts them up for the night. So he must have been catching on that God was saying, don't call things people unclean. They're not unclean. And of course, what happens? He goes off to the centurion, doesn't he? Witnesses to them and they all get saved. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, God's told me not to call you guys unclean. What he has made clean. Yes. That was the rhema word of the Spirit speaking to him. That's not in the Bible. That, that story's not in the Bible, is it? It's not written scripture. It's not the Logos. That was the Spirit speaking to Peter. So the rhema word of the Spirit is one of the other ways we, we receive truth. We receive truth. And it's so important, isn't it? And op but often we need to share it with others too, to verify, to test it, and God speaking to us. But in a, in a personal way, I'm sure nearly all of you could say that at some point, God has spoken to your hearts with a rhema word of the Spirit, hasn't he? And you knew it was truth, didn't you? You knew it was truth. So wonderful. God is so good. Jesus was the embodiment of truth, wasn't he? He's, what did he say? Someone's already said it this morning. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, that's right. And, and the only way is to walk in his truth, because he was the embodiment of truth. He showed us what truth was when he lived on the earth. Everything about his life was, was truth. He was our, our perfect example. Because he lived the truth, didn't he? He lived the truth. And this is what he's calling us to do. We've been so good at talking about things, but God's calling the church, calling you and me to live the truth. The world's not interested in hollow words. We've got to live the truth. That's with our language. Well, that'd be bad language, but that's certainly at the door. We shouldn't be doing that. But with what we say, we'll only have weight when we live the truth. Isn't that true? Yes. And God's moving in our lives to, to show us. So worship, we keep back on this context of worship in spirit and in truth. Worship is living the truth. Living the truth. Living the truth out. In your daily lives. That's worship. Not sounding religious or pious. It's living the truth. That will demonstrate who Jesus is. How wonderful he is. This is the new covenant that's written on our hearts. Remember, remember it says that, that uh, he would write the, the law on our hearts. Okay, write the law in our hearts. It's the truth of God written on our hearts so that we live it out. So why is this so important? You know, when we talk about worshiping in truth, uh, well, it's, it's living the truth, but there's another thing that we need to think about and go a little bit, a little bit deeper on. Because as the Spirit works in us, as we, we worship in the Spirit, the Spirit works through our spirit, doesn't it? So what is born of the Spirit is spirit. So our spirit is born alive by Him. So why? So we worship in the Spirit with our spirit. Remember in this verse where it says we worship Him in spirit and in truth, it's small s spirit. It's worship in spirit, our spirit, and in truth. It's not... Big S, it's small S. So what's so important about that? I think it's this. I think it's because our beliefs, what we believe, the truth we have in our lives, is not just up here in our minds, it's in our spirits. So this is the important thing, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Keep, keep getting that in your head. 
But what we believe, or the truth that we believe, it is in our spirits. We think about it in our minds, we react to it in our minds. They determine what some of our actions are, but our deeply held beliefs we carry in our spirit. Mm. My spirit belongs to God. Yeah, that's right. And this is what we're doing. We're, we're living truth out of our spirit. Yes. Okay? And this is what God is working on. When God changes us, he, he changes what we believe. He changes the truth in our hearts. And that's what's so important. Mm. To understand that when we worship God, if we have wrong beliefs in our hearts, mm. then we don't live out of truth and we don't live out of the Spirit. Is that easy? Does that make sense? Yes. I hope so. It's really important to understand because sometimes we think that that these that our beliefs are just in our mind. But they're actually much deeper. They're in our spirit. They're in the depths of our spirit. And when God is renewing us, He renews our minds, but He's also renewing our hearts, isn't He? And changing what we believe deep down in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And this can go for a whole lot of areas in our, in our lives as, as we grow in Him. Mm -hmm. um, the Spirit is the one who, who changes those beliefs. I, I remember, it was interesting that, that Sandra shared a bit of her personal story last week. And it made me think about uh, myself. Because for many years, um, I had a, so many wrong beliefs in my heart especially about my mother. And it was only when God began to change those beliefs that I was able to, to forgive and to actually come to a place of loving my mother. The simple lie that I had in my head was that I didn't think my mother loved me. I thought she hated me. You know, at one day when I was praying, God just showed me how wrong I was. It was just a rainbow word of the Spirit. It was awesome. And I thought, I've been wrong all this time, God. And I've been blaming my mother, and yet it's, it, that's not the truth. And when I got the truth, I was a different person. You know? Set free. Set free. Yeah. Changed what was in my heart. Mm -hmm. And this is what God is doing all the time with us, even in small areas. You know? Even in little areas. God is working to put the truth into our spirits and get the lies out. And it makes us a different person. Mm. I just wanted to finish today... What's the time? Ooh. I just wanted to finish today with this. I wrote this down. What are you believing in your heart that's hindering your ability to live to please God? In other words, to worship. What's stuck in your heart if there is and I think we all have, what's stuck in your heart? What lie, what false belief is stuck that hinders your ability to worship God as He would want you to? I wrote some examples down. I'll give you some examples. I've heard this one a lot. God doesn't speak to me. And that's sometimes the lie we have in our hearts where we, some people think that God doesn't speak to them. And there can be all sorts of clutter and all sorts of other stuff up there that's in the road, but it's a lie. It's stuck in your heart. It's a lie. God's voice sometimes is very soft, and you have to be in the right place to, to pick it up and discern it. But to say that God doesn't speak to me is a lie. It's an excuse too, isn't it? Good excuse. <laughs> or this one, classic. Oh, I'm not gifted enough. I'm not gifted enough. I think a lot of that's been enhanced by seeing highly gifted people up on the platforms, isn't it? And all the rest of it. I'm not gifted enough. What, what is it that you might be getting? I'm not like others. People wouldn't listen to me. People wouldn't listen to me. What do you think about that? That's, that's a good one to put up there. We believe it. Before I came to this church, Oh, 12 years ago, I, I sort of said that to God. I said, oh, are you going to listen to me, God? You know? and, and I just had, laughed for the next, I don't know, 10 minutes when God said to me, I'm going to make you look good. I'm going to make you look good. 
clear as a bell, clear in my mind. I heard him say, I'm going to make you look good. Wow. And I think, well, I'm going to need that, God. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God. Yeah, thank you, God. I just sat there and laughed. I really, honestly did. I sat there and laughed. Well, this, here's another one I thought of. Um, some people go around saying, I'm a failure. Everything I do just goes wrong. How can I do anything for you, God? How can I do this or that that you're asking me to do? Things always go wrong. Haven't you heard that before? Yeah. It's a classic, isn't it? Okay. But some people believe that. They really do. Or the obvious, you know, I'm too old. <laughs> and we, we know how God uses anybody and everybody, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> um, or too young. <laughs> yeah. I heard this one from someone once. I've done my bit for the church, for God. Oh, yes. They believe they've done all they needed to do. I've done my bit for the church. Time to have a rest. Okay. <laughs> Or, or this one, um, I'm okay. I'm okay as I am. I'll be okay. I'll get by. People don't want to change. And so they, they believe that they're okay. They, they put it in those words, I'm okay. But what they're really saying is, I'm just prepared to trust in myself. I'll get by. Mm. I'll make it somehow. It's called trust in yourself. You know? Some people are sucked in by that line that they'll make things happen and they'll, they'll work it out, get by. And so they will walk their own walk, they walk their own life. Yeah. That's a huge one. There's so many, isn't there? They might not be big ones, they can be little ones. You know, little fears, lies that are stuck in our minds that stop us, you know, from doing stuff. Yes, Kim. When you talk about the people that say oh, I'm a failure, I yeah. was listening a couple of years ago, actually four years ago, to some teaching at the church before I moved over this side, and they were listening to Andrew Womack. Oh, yeah. And he was saying how he walks around and says, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, I'm mm -hmm. so, so, so blessed. And he said it's just amazing the blessings that come away when you confess the opposite of that. Like yeah, instead of saying yeah. I'm a failure, you actually confess yeah. that you're a blessing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, very good. That's so true. So let's finish now for a moment. And, you know, let's just listen to God for a bit and see if, if there's anything in your heart, in our hearts, that's hindering us from worshipping God in truth. We're replacing the lies with the truth. That's what we're doing. That's what God is doing. We thank your Holy Spirit for speaking to us. Well, God, it may be just a small thing, but you're, you're working on every little detail in our lives because you're a holy God. And you said to us, Lord, be holy as I am holy. Lord, we want to do that. We want to be in that place. So, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you don't reveal it now, that you would reveal it even during the week, in the days ahead. What you're saying to us. So that we're full of your truth, Lord. We want to be full of your truth, God. Fill us up with your truth. Let's just quietly sit for just a minute. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Thank you.
Forget what you've said. May all of your words reside in our hearts. May we be open and willing to, to listen to you still further as you speak to us, as you raise us up. I just want to declare over you, over these next few weeks, the blessing of God. Don't forget the turnaround. Don't forget that he's making things different now. Watch out for what he's doing and rejoice. He's releasing joy into, into heavy hearts. He's changing situations around about you that have hindered things. He's doing a new thing. It's a, it's a new time and it's beginning now. And we just have to be open to it. We just have to be willing to follow God. If you're not willing, you'll walk down another path. Lord, I pray the blessing over every person here today. The blessing of new things in their life. Oh God. New ways of doing things. Eyes that are more open to the Spirit of God. Ears that are more open to the Spirit of God. I pray that dull ears will hear the rain of Word of God that the scriptures might stand out to you like neon lights. Oh, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Jesus. And convict us, Lord, where we need to be convicted. And heal us. Heal us, Lord. Lord, sweep through us and heal us, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Are you receiving? I hope you're receiving. Receive. Be expectant of what God's going to do. Thank you, God.